Welcome to Memphis, Tennessee for the 2007 Choice Hotel U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. Another exciting men's quarterfinal match. This is the second of four matches you'll be seeing on the Tennis Channel. And they shake hands here in the white, winning the toss. And Mitch Williams from Pueblo, Colorado. A very hard-hitting racquetball player. And then now a legend of the game. Jason Menino has been around for a long time. He's a number one player. Uh, and he is a two-time champion of, of this tournament. Look at this get. Mike, let me start by saying that the pace of this match is completely different than what we saw in the match, the first quarterfinal match of Alvaro. It's unbelievable. And, Shane, it's, and we just saw one round. It's, un it's like night and day. We've got a great match up here. Punch, counter punch. Who's going to match it up? Who's going to do what? It's going to be a great day for racquetball. Oh, You can tell by uh, uh, Jason, first of all, going with the shirtless look today. And, uh, or sleeveless. Yeah, sorry, he's not shirtless. Oh, we don't want him to take his entire <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> Thank you very much. And he uh, he's noticeably bigger than he was at this time of this year. Bigger in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fitness -wise. Stronger, looking yeah. stronger through the shoulders, stronger through the back, and uh, must have felt like he needed uh, that to give him a little more upper body strength uh, for deep in the, deep in the court shots and uh, in center court. No, that's a good observation, Mike. It's interesting. I, my wife and I and my kid, Sophia, we uh, just recently moved to San Diego, which is where Jason lives. And now that I'm down there, I'm playing with Jason and I'm seeing what he's doing. And he is doing a lot more incorporating fitness into his program. We're doing yoga. We're doing these workouts. And, and trying to hang with him is unbelievable. And that's, uh, I think, the results are speaking for themselves. Well, at this point, that's exactly. I mean, he's looking for he's looking for longevity, and uh, he's 32, uh, not young in racquetball, but certainly not old. I mean, we've had players that have played well into their 40s at the top of the game. Cliff Swain, for example, was 40, and uh, when he had finally had enough. So, the sky's the limit as far as age goes. And I think that was the, the one thing, if anything, uh, you know, Jason needed to do was, was add some of this stuff to his his lifestyle and his game, especially the style that he plays, which is so rough on the body. Yes. And to be quite honest, it's not easy for a guy like Jason to practice because he's not going to go out and play practice matches and dive all over the place because uh, he would just, uh, you know, that would last about two weeks. But what he does do sure. is he, he gets his timing through his practice matches and works he's on everything on. else except for the diving. Well, I agree with you on most things, Mike, but I do have to tell you, I played him in a practice match recently, and he was all over the place. Well, and that's what he'll do at the as the tournaments draw closer, <laughs> right. there's no doubt. But, you know, when he's three weeks out from an event, he's not diving all over the place because yeah. uh, three, the, the body just can't handle that. Right. Although, he, I have to say, he's been the one player that's been able to bounce back. You know, he'll play a three-hour match and uh, must have some secret potion uh, that he goes to because it, it's really not normal to be able to bounce back the way he One can. Three. Great shot there by Mitch Williams. I think a true test for him if he's such a big hitter would be if he is uh, able to take a little bit of pace off and get some control. He's just such a big hitter and he relies on that power game. He relies on all that heat because that's his biggest weapon. Everybody knows he's Mitch is one of the harder hitters out there, but you got to remember who you're playing. You're playing a guy named Jason Menino who has played all the hardest hitting players that are on this tour from the uh, Cliff Swain's his entire career to Kane Wazalincha to all these players that just took some of that. You know, Mitch hit, putting a little bit of heat on him. He's not going to be frazzling to no. Jason Menino. No, he's not. And you know what? He's, he's still well into his prime. And... Uh, he is not going to be worried about a guy like Mitch until Mitch can establish the fact that he can hit six or seven drive serves in a row, not one every three. And that's that's the challenge in this match for Mitch. As soon as he, already he's gone away from the drive serve, and that's a bad sign for him. That's a great call by Jason Thorner. Not every, not every ref is going to catch that.
The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by the Choice Hotels International Family of Hotel Brands with over 5,000 locations and 10 different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine covering centers everywhere. And by Lucite International, the worldwide leader in crystal clear acrylic. To learn more, visit lucite.com. And by USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve the quality of your life, visit usaracquetball.com for all the details. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. Welcome back. Still 2 3. Looks like Mitch is going to line up for a drive serve. And he needs to establish this drive serve to have any hope of winning this match. <laughs> That's not establishing anything. Oh, yeah, that's not a good serve. One of the other things, a rule of racquetball that not a lot of people pay attention to, but it's, it's good to watch with a guy like Mitch with his big drive serve is the footfall. And his foot has to be touching some part of that front line, and we'll see him when he, we'll talk about it again when we see him set up for a drive serve. But we've watched a few matches at this pro level where Mitch has been thrown off his entire game plan because every one of these drive serves have been called a footfall especially with a side line judge now, being able to look at that. That's twice. That's two times. Those are two setups now. Okay, you can't do that. Four, seven, two. I didn't really see it as a setup there. I mean, it was a good ceiling ball coming right to back court, and yeah. they kind of got tangled up. They and, you know, what, what's happening is uh, Jason kind of... Uh, Jason wanted that shot, which is the bottom line. I don't think that, I don't think that Mitch wants to get in any kind of a talking battle with the mouth of the North. I think it's just better to focus on racquetball, not give him any extra incentive. I would have to agree with that. Jason, is, not only does he have all these weapons, but he's definitely got a mouth on him. Game one, 6-2, Jason Menino. Skip ball there. And Mike, I'm going to call you out. Something you said during the break there, you, you basically said that if Mitch doesn't start bringing some heat on the drive serve, that's going to be over in three. Yeah, it, Mitch, Mitch has all the tools and has a complete game, but he's still a hot and cold player at this point in his career. And without establishing good drive serves, He's not going to be able to beat. He's not going to be able to beat Jason or even compete. And what he did there, good drive serve, good re-kill. That's what we talked about in the prelims. That's what he needs to do. Three shot rallies. Don't fool around with these 20 shot passes and everything else. Just get it down and roll it out. And did you see his front foot there? That was a great shot. I don't know if we had a camera angle on that or not. We'll look at it in the replay here. But the bottom line is. You watch that front foot of Mitch when he's drive serving, and he is really, really close to footfall. It's so tough about playing a competitor like Jason Pena because not only is, is he a guy that's just going to run you and just put a ton of pressure on you, but he just never gives up. That's right. And it's, you know what, to be honest, the top four of uh, 
uh, put up a pretty good wall for, for Mitch at this point. I mean, he hasn't scaled the wall yet. Uh, it, will he? I think he's going to, but when? That, that's not going to do it, that kind of a shot. Oh, wow. One thing you cannot do is step up and take balls. If anything, when you're playing a guy like Jason, you need to step back and take that ball. And that, what I mean, Sean, is he stepped up and hit an overhead and actually hit the ball higher because of that. If he would have stepped back, he would have been able to hit the ball lower and kill it and finish off the rally. 7-3 now, game one. It's the best of five to 11 points. We, sat, we have Jason sticking with his plan, which was his lob neck off the uh, off the sidewall, straight lobs, and uh, we see some variety, but not a lot. Good shot. Three, seven, seven. Up front, I have to say that so far Mitch has been, uh, he's held his own in front court. Uh, where he's uh, lost the battle to this point is uh, on the surf. Just hasn't made any kind of an impression with his drive surf yet. So he's going to go for another drive here, it looks like. Good shot, nice shot. And that's what we're looking for, Sean. We were looking for some excitement. We were looking for three shot rallies. We're looking for Four, some old seven, school seven. serve and shoot racquetball. And that's what we get out of, out of a guy like Mitch. It's great to watch. Sticking with that drive serve, and he's, he's got one of the best in the game here. And look at that foot right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There it is. Drives. A little banter from both players. A little bad miss there by Mitch. Good mix of serve there by uh, by Jason. Uh, he's thrown in a couple of uh, drive Z's now, and and you can see that Mitch's timing is a shade off on the return. Everything that uh, the knuckleballer is after. Another miss, but that's a great serve. Yeah. Nice. It's a good. It's a good serve, and you know when you're playing Jason, you get you get your shots, and it, you know that's not a serve that's at 12 miles an hour shouldn't really make an impression on you, but uh, he puts them in the corners and deep, and they tend to. Another mistake from Mitch Williams. Now 10-4, and literally within 15 minutes. We've got this first game already in the hands of Jason Menino. 10-4, game point. And there it is, game one in the can. Jason Menino comes out firing. And you had to expect that coming. It was, a, it was a routine first game win. Yep, Jason Menino up in the series, one game to zero. We're going to find out what happens here in game two. We'll be right back. Mitch has got to come out firing. I mean, to try to slow the pace down. I mean, what do you do? The bottom line, what do you, what do, you do against Jason? He's got to make his, uh, an impression with his drive serve, and after that, just play solid racquetball. To be quite honest, he got beat 11-4, but he got beat that game on his own returns. His returns were very weak, and they've got to be a lot better. And he, and he didn't serve well. And we said at the outset, if he serves well and returns decently, that he has a chance in the match. If he doesn't do those things, he has no chance. Point. Nope. You're out of position now. Yeah, but you're behind the player, unfortunately, Mitch. One seven zero. Trying to get a hinder there, and he was he was behind Jason, so that, I think that's a good call by Thorner. Right now, he's making it look very easy, and against the player that. It shouldn't be this easy. Zero seven two. As far as just fundamentals, and, I mean, Mitch has just got such a pretty stroke. You know, it generates so much power, and it's just flat. 
Sure. He got lucky with that one. He did. And he, every drive serve he's hit has hit the side wall. He has yet to find the angle to hit a ball that comes straight off the front wall and hits the back wall first before the side wall. He hasn't done that yet in the match. There's a good serve. That's the first one. That's the first one, and that one was perfect. And that was, I know Jason was looking for a short serve. It wasn't short. It was about six inches over the line. And exactly what he needs to do to get back in the match. And you can see him staying down more on these. His last three serves, head still, and uh, getting what he needs. Yeah, that running to cover is a mistake, Sean. Right. Don't run to cover. That's not a dead duck setup by any stretch, and he should be playing an honest center court there. Yeah, you see a lot of players try to go for that anticipation and just get up there, try to cover a splat because you think that's automatically what they're going to hit. But like you said, it's much more likely that you're going to stay in the rally if you stay true to your center court position. No doubt about it. And here's the other thing about uh, what Mitch is doing on the drive serve, or on the, on the return of his serve. When Jason hits it to the forehand, when he punch lobs over to the left, Mitch is hitting it kind of off his back foot, and Jason's very wary of that. And you, like there, right there, he was left foot, then right foot, instead of going the other way around, right, left, right, right. And if he doesn't go in that sequence, he'll be forced to hit the ball off his back foot. Two, seven, three. Mitch right in this one, 2-3. See if he sticks with that heat. That's definitely his weapon. He's got to keep bringing that heat to Jason. There you go. Now go bottom. Oh, that ball was way off the back wall. Yeah. Yeah, way off the back. That's a surprising ceiling ball there, Sean. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... Uh, it was a setup, and that's what he wanted from it. But instead, he played it safe and went right back to the ceiling, which most of the time you played safe against Jason, you're going to pay for it. Really a, really a kind of a weak, wobbly backhand there. You know, he could have hit 14 shots, and he chose number 15, and it was the worst one. That's oh, tough. Oh, man. There's a crowd pleaser. And that's a good example for all you racquetball players at home are just getting started. Notice the way Mitch stayed down on that ball all the way until he followed completely through. You see a lot of players, especially at the uh, lower levels and the amateurs, will go and they'll bend their knees as they're approaching the ball, but then right as they're making contact, they just lift up, especially in shots like that where they're stuck in the back. Mitch just did a great job staying down on that. Definitely. Three, Here's the other thing about being a power player. It's great to be a power player, but power without control is useless. And the other thing, if you can throw in some variety, there's Ooh, three, well, three bounces. Great serve, four, seven, an excellent four. mix. But if you can throw in some variety and not pound every ball and hit some touch shots, which already Mitch has been doing, you can hang with these guys. Speaking of hanging, it's all tied up here, four piece. These serves have been great. That's an unbelievable return of serve right there. But the serve right before that, if I can comment on that, Mike, really, really tough to do in the sport of racquetball with the dimensions of the court, as you mentioned. This, uh, the, short, the short line being right there where Jason's right foot is. Mitch had that drive serve bounce twice. And that's, that's not easy to do. No, it's not. And, it, and you know what? He's fine in the range on the drive serve. And it has the potential to get to turn into a more of an interesting match very soon. Now let's let's face it. We want to see that. These, this is not two guys that love each other. It'd be great to see a war. Yeah. Again, contrary to what we were watching with Shane Vanderson, Alvaro Beltran, both gentlemen, both really good sportsmen, and you know they like each other. Yes. It's and it was like a tea party. Yes. Here, you know, these guys, no love lost. I uh, know, no. <laughs> none. There you go. Wow. And that, shot. that shot right there is what he needs to do more of. First shot, down the line. Second shot, side front. And that sequence will win him more rallies. If he sticks with just pound, 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 well, Jason will be all over it. Again, with the drive serve, it wasn't a very good one. Like you said, Mike, it was coming off the side wall. It's kind of a setup, but he got away with it. All He's tied up, five apiece. Mitch is finding the range and he's flattening out some balls here. You know, he, 
If he can win this game, we'll have a match. He can't go down 2-0. This is not one of those situations where he can go down 2-0 and, and win in five. That won't happen. Here's the thing with, that Mitch is doing. He's changing his rhythm when he changes his serve. And Jason was staying home on that one. He knew what serve Mitch was hitting before Mitch even wound up to hit it. Skip ball. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Six, seven, five. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. We didn't see in the booth the same thing that what was seen by the players or the ref. Oh, wow. Well, again, not yeah. necessary to dive. It, 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 the ball was at his chest in center court. And uh, I don't want to say he panics. I just think that that's his first tendency is to feel sure. like he needs to dive. And, uh, you know, it's going to cost you some points, and it, and it did there. We're going to take a break to commercial here, but when we get back, more exciting racquetball here at the Racquet Club of Memphis. Welcome back. Excellent return by Jason. Excellent. Good footwork. The ball's off the back wall. So, I mean, it's a setup, but still the footwork is solid, and he leaves himself the option of hitting about four shots. Nice shot. Well played rally by Mitch Williams. Five, seven, six. You know, Mitch uh, jumped on the scene about, uh, geez, it's probably been five years ago, and uh, had a 2-0 lead on uh, Kane Wazalenchuk, and I think it was the round of 32s here. And he played a flawless first two games. End up losing the match in five, but everybody saw what the potential was with this guy. And everybody still sees the potential. Six, seven, six. Go, Jason. Yeah, he, he's a collegiate champion. Now he just recently won national singles yes. in Houston, which is a very, very prestigious title and a tough tournament to win. So he's definitely staking his claim here. And now in the top ten, of the number six ranking in the world, Mitch Williams is definitely becoming a force to be reckoned with. He is, but he needs to make an impression at these tournaments. He yeah. needs to make an impression at this tournament and not make it be, we'll see you next year. The thing that Mitch probably hasn't realized yet is that hitting the same exact serve you've just hit is not going to cut it when you're playing a guy like Jason. If you've hit a Z-serve and you've got a point, this is one of those instances where you can't, you don't want to go back to it. Good shot. You know what, Jason's kind of uh, in, a, in a, a, a bit of a downward spiral in this game. I mean, he's only uh, down one point, but you can see his, uh, his mind wandering a little bit out there. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry for the delayed reaction there, but I, I, I agree with you, Mike. I mean, he, you can tell when Jason's totally dialed in, and, yes. and right now um, maybe he's, he's thinking about something. It's, nope. it's not 100% yeah. not on the court right now. That's right. Mitch has, Mitch has got him out of his rhythm a little bit with the, with the very tight pinches he's hit. Oh, nope. that could be dangerous. Step on a wet spot like that. Bambi on the Six, ice. Seven, eight. Swing. It sure is. Yikes. Big miss right there. <laughs> Jason with the habitual routine before his serve. He's been doing that for years. A couple bounces. 
touches his foot on that dotted line, walks to the front of the court, hits the ball around. Been doing that forever. How am I? It's been a, it, it's been a lot of years. Two, that, oh, two bad two bad misses there, back to back by Mitch. One a forehand, one a backhand. Can't afford that right now. This is crunch time in this match. He needs the second game. Interesting change of events here. You see Mitch starting to lose the focus and Jason starting to dial in a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, but here's the thing. Mitch right now, he's dictating play. It's 8-8, but he has totally controlled the second game. It's a big point in this game too here. Oh, screen serve. Classic setup by Mitch with, of a power player with a high, high left elbow. Gives him extra leverage, and he's great hip movement through the ball. It's a good shot by Jason. Good return to serve. And Jason's sticking with the plan. When the ball comes off the back wall, he has hit a ton of balls cross court to Mitch's back end. And that's one of the weaknesses that lefties generally will have, seeing balls come out of the left corner backhand. Back, backhand to backhand. These, these serves that we're seeing from Jason Menino, just man, every, really, really sharp. Not easy to get your racket on it. it like, it, it, it's deceiving because it seems like a setup because it's going slow and you can get your racket on it, but the, the, you know, the sidewall is right there. It's a tough angle. It sure is. Oh, wow. There's the setup. And this is what's traditionally gone on in, their, in the matches that these two have played. It Once it tightens up, Jason puts the hammer down and Mitch misses shots. To Jason's credit, Mike, it seems like Jason does that with most of his opponents. When, it, when it's tight, he always seems to be the guy that squeaks a little ahead a little. Is that Kane Wazalintra just walking in the building? Well, the king is back. It's good to see Kane back in action. Uh, not playing this tournament, but uh, he'll be back next year. See if we can talk him into getting up here and chatting with us. I, I would love to talk to him. We've got a couple questions for that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a... Uh, <laughs> A lot of people that have a lot of questions for Kane. <laughs> well, just to put it out there, Mike, I would say now is the time for Mitch. You better do it here. This is it. He needs, to, he needs two points to square up the 10-10 and then find a way to get back in this game. There's one. He's going to have to, he's going to have to drive serve and not a Z. I don't think Jason's going to make another weak return like that. That's a bad mistake. I don't expect he'll make two in a row. Wow. That was a fantastic shot by Jason. And to be quite honest, that backhand, that ceiling ball that Jason hit, it was a good one. But I thought Mitch should have shot it. I thought he should have said, you know what, I'm, I'm taking the initiative here. Yeah, you've got to be a little bit aggressive and take these opportunities against Jason because you, know, you can't play patty cake with the guy, you know? And here it is, game point. Wow. Great get and smart, smart play by Jason Menino. And it's, it's it, 2-0 in the series, Jason Menino doing what we would expect he would do and commanding lead here in this men's pro quarterfinal. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Jason Menino leading the series two games to zero and Mitch sticking with that drive serve which is smart and nice nice first point there for Mitch got to really get a run going here that's what he needs and here's the thing if he can run three or four or five uh, he can actually get 
back in this match and at least get one game. And once you get one game, then maybe Jason will tighten, tighten up. I, I doubt it, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, tall order. J Jason's just, oh my goodness, what a get. Wow, that was an amazing hit by Mitch. I mean, that was just not gettable by for most players, he, he literally turned his body around and retrieved that off the back wall. That was amazing. He sure did. He made an incredible get down the left-hand side, too. And then Menino, really, that was not an easy backhand that he flat rolled. And that was a chest high, and he buried it. Whoops. Slipping all over the place. The court is wet. Mitch frustrated with that. Mitch up 1 0. Good shot. Jason's rock solid in center court. Yeah, you know, th that serve is a jam serve, and that's a good serve against most players. But again, Jason being so good with his control and ability to stay with the ball, set his feet, keep his head down, all these fundamentals. It's not necessarily the greatest serve against Jason. Well, you know, he, he didn't bury it, but he hit a good solid shot. Ball out of court on the side wall there, replay. And uh, he, he didn't bury it, but if you're going to have Jason spin, I'd rather have him spin to the backhand than spin to the forehand. The forehand, he's got a tight, little tighter stroke. And on the backhand, Zero, it's seven, not one. as tight. And that's what Mitch was after. He went for the wrap around Jason to the backhand, and uh, it's good if you've established the drive to both sides. Mitch screaming at himself, trying to fire himself up. Welcome back to the planet. Well, Mike, are we in the presence of greatness here, buddy? Kane Wazalinchuk joins us in the booth here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I just did say the king is back, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, no, I, I saw your uh, baby face and I said, hey, that looks like Mr. Wazalinchuk. I sit here in between two Canadian champions here. We got Mike Saricia, we got Kane Wazalinchuk, Kane. I've got a million questions for you, buddy. Yeah, I bet you do. Oh, where do I start? So, first of all, what have you been doing? You look good. Just been training, getting ready. Yeah? I'm ready. When's your comeback? Uh, first, well, the first tournament of the year, whatever, whatever that is. I so, think the, yes, the first tournament. Uh, well, Motor, the Motorola World Championship, something like that? In Chicago. I think so, yeah. 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 So, now, uh, you, you've seen the competition. You know what's been going on. I know you've been following Three, the tour. Um, what do you think about the level of play? What do you think about your comeback? I haven't really been watching a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, I just hear it from, you know, friends, and every once in a while I'll catch some racquetball on the tennis channel or something like that. But um, this game's getting a little bit too slow paced for me. I want to see some drive serves. What is this? <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. You're 100% right, Shane. I just... Like, I mean, you know, these are great rallies, but please, someone put a ball down. I hear that, buddy. How many times me and you rally like this, Cerise? Never. That's right. I didn't think so. Sorry, oh, I'm going by nice. board. And those guys, I'll tell you right now. Oh, what a rally. Oh, no. Hold on. Jason's upset. Yeah, that was... Uh, the, the, side, the side judge missed that one. Jason made a fantastic get off that. And, and it's especially frustrating after you've made 14 good gets. The crowd loves it. Jason not happy about it. Welcome back. Yes. You know what, Kane? We were just talking about uh, Mitch and a match he played against you about uh, five or six years ago, and he, he was up two games to love. Mm -hmm. I believe that was in the round of 32s, and you uh, came back and oh, won the next oh, three games oh. easily. But uh, uh, he has the game 
to challenge everybody. You know, from the very start of when I think the Lose first time I played or I saw Mitch play was in uh, North Carolina a long, long time ago, one of my first years on tour. And, I mean, just his game style, you know, it's just he has a great game style. His power, I mean, he, you know, he can usually put the ball down. He, you know, usually. That's a good one there. Yeah. The, the problem is, is that he's just so streaky. And, yeah. and really, his, his, his game is complete. The only problem is, is his up is his head, you know. Yes. And that's what happened in the match when I played him, you know. I mean, it was probably, besides when I was down two games to nothing against Derek, uh, you know, he put me two games down, like, in 15 minutes. He couldn't miss anything. And then, yeah. and then all of a sudden, we got, like, 5-5 five, five in the third, and he couldn't even, he couldn't even hit the front wall, that's you know. Right. And so I think it's just, I think it's more mental to him. And I think that, you know, if he gets a couple of big wins and I mean, winning the nationals, you know, I mean, that's, that's huge, you know, so. So speaking of mental toughness, Kane, you know, one of the things that makes a, a player great is all the tournament experience. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare now for your comeback without being on the tour and having the experience of playing these last couple of years? I mean, I just go out and, and, and just, practice I mean there's nothing I got to work for or anything I mean you know the, the really the biggest th adjustment that I'm gonna have to make is is the speed of the ball you know that's that's really you know that's really the biggest thing I mean even when I first came on tour um, you know I was I was playing you know a players and I mean I wasn't playing open players I was I was just playing someone that could you know punish me if I left the ball up could get some balls and you know just rally that's that's really all I need you know so really when I come back it's nothing new from, you know, when I first started playing again. I mean, that's the way I kind of look at it is that, you know, I'm a rookie again and I got to work my way back up again, you know? Oh, great get. That's amazing. That's racquetball at its finest. The crowd on their feet. Mitch Williams getting the play flying up. You gotta love it. Fantastic rally. Absolutely awesome. Awesome. Really, really cool. Keep up the tennis channel. Come on, keep up the tennis channel. Oh my God. That's right. Keep up the tennis channel. Wow, that was amazing rally. Something I noticed there as Kane was leaving our booth, it looked like you could see the eyes of Jason Menino seeing Kane for the first time. Gave him the double take, didn't he? Yeah, he all of a sudden he said, oh no, he's not in the, oh, no, I'm okay. <laughs> it's funny. It seems like Mitch has made more amazing shots. He's had more incredible uh, rallies that have gone his way, but then you look at the scoreboard and Jason's winning. Yeah, it's, it's and handily. Yeah. That is one of the worst shots I've ever seen Menino hit in my life. He hit that ball straight into the turf. Yeah, that was brutal. I, that's, that's incredible. It's not a bad serve. That's a good serve. It's going to go out of the court. And in racquetball, Sean, when the ball goes out of the court, we bring a new ball into play. Yep. And when the new ball comes into play, it does have a little bit of a little bit of a sheen to it. So it'll slide a little bit. Like that ball right there, it might have bit and stuck on the front, like kind of in the in the corner. And uh, Mitch might have been able to get his racket on it, but because it's brand new, it slid down the wall. It's easier to roll out. Is the bottom line? Oh yeah, definitely. The ball once it gets heated up has a different play, different playability on it than a fresh ball. Get. Touch shot though. Yeah. See, that's one. That's one thing about Mitch's game that would be really good, and that's one thing. You know, we just had talked to uh, Kane, and he was probably the best ever at changing the pace of the game. And Swain was one of the one of the ones that really rung in that era where he would blast the ball 190 miles an hour and then hit a touch shot. Well, Shane or uh, Kane, he can touch balls from any angle, any height, and he would get a setup off the back wall and touch it in. 
And that's what, uh, you know, would add an excellent variety if Mitch could do that. It would really help his game. Yeah, most power players just kind of have that going for them. Yes. Just that huge swing, but not so much the finesse. Yes. Chris Crowder is another player that I think yes. of who could really use that in his game. I mean, he. this is a guy that overswings. Repeatedly. Went, repeatedly, nonstop. He just really, really swings hard, and you just don't see him hit very much uh, finesse at all. And the problem is in front court, that's when you do need to hit a touch shot. I mean, you don't, you don't need to blast it when you're four, four feet from the front wall. Just a touch shot. Closest corner or down the line? That's the cardinal rule, Sean. Let me write that down. 3-5. Good shot there by Mitch. There's a good shot, but that, that's a prime example. Don't a, a touch shot there. Jason's at 38 feet. A touch shot in the right corner. The ball doesn't come out, and it's over. And you'll see Jason hit it a lot. I have to say that it's hard to get the last word in on Jason. Oh yeah. You could hang up the phone on him, and he'd still he'd still be talking, and feel like he got the last word in. <laughs> yeah. Him. He's a tough guy to battle. Look okay. at him, still going. Yeah. It's a lock that he will say the last thing, which he did there. Mitch just said, "Okay, then we'll do lunch. I don't need to keep this going." Right. Five seventy four. You know, everybody wonders what's what the deal is with Jason. With Four, you know, how does he get to so many balls? He closes on the ball better than anybody that's ever played the game, and he he reminds me of a of a, a very young Ruben Gonzalez. And uh, I wonder why that is. Maybe not young, but yeah. yeah I mean, he certainly uh, you know Ruben certainly had his uh, his part with uh, Jason's upbringing. Sure. And uh, the difference between their games, they both built their game on retrieving, but uh, the difference is that. Ruben used to hit touch serves or uh, cut serves and keep the ball low and Jason has built his game on playing the ball high so it's just oh that's a, that's an ace that's an ace Jason hates it hates it but it was an ace it hit the crack no comment. I don't know. I mean, that's a tough one. But you're basing that off the bounce, obviously, because it died there. So yes. it must have hit the ground and the wall at the same time. Therefore, if that happened on the front wall, hit the ground and the yes. front wall at the same time, that would be a skip. So yep. Therefore, it hit the ground first. Yes, exactly. And you're right. It's just the same way you have to watch it up at the front wall when a ball goes into the front wall off a splat or a pinch or down the line for that matter. You have to watch the ball to the end. That's the same situation here. And that's that's a prime example right there where Mitch Mitch just need to hit that ball side front. He doesn't need to hit that ball 290 down the line. Right. Because Jason's playing center field. That's not an avoidable hunter. They're having a, an interesting conversation, Sean, and, and and Jason obviously feels like he's right, Jason Menino. And uh, what's happening is Mitch is hitting Z-serves that are coming off the back wall, and Jason is hitting the ball cross court. Now, in my mind, it's not a it's not unavoidable if you're hitting the ball cross court. But Jason feels differently. You don't see this very often, you know, with him losing his composure, but. He has certainly He's lost his composure at this point. Yeah, you know, you see him screaming, yelling, you see him get upset, get fired up, but he, he always seems to be focused and, and into it. But, yeah, like you said, he seems to be losing, the, at least temporarily. 
If I were Mitch, I would have I tried to hit a Z-serve off the back wall again. I mean, he's, if it's driving Jason that crazy, I'd do it again. Why go away from it? Make it come off the back long and just run to the right side because you know he's hitting across court to try and make a point with the official. And let's face it, we're, this is like boxing with rackets. I mean, you're, you're in a tight quarters. It's a physical, aggressive game, and people are going to lose their composure. We'll take a time out here. Mitch Williams up 8-6. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Jason Menino and Jason Thorner go at it with a little bit of... Two, a little discrepancy there. It was two bounces, but... Uh, Interesting match so far, very intense. It's been an excellent third game, and you know what? To be honest, the last two games have been fantastic. This is this is great racquetball, and uh, Jason's still holding on to the edge here, and I look for him to close this match out, but if he doesn't, he's gonna be racking up some unwanted court time out there. Yep, Mitch. Mitch has really gotta get it done right here. Uh, the lob. Oh, oh he says he That's good. That's a good shot. That's the one. That's the one that we were talking about before. Don't hit that one side front. That ball goes down the line, off the miss pinch, rally over. It didn't even. He hit it two feet high. Jason didn't even take a step. Two. Got to hit better serves. It's a crucial, crucial point in the match. Nine six, and he rushed his serve and hit a bad Z. Left it. You know, a C player could have rolled that one out. Oh, Are you kidding me? Serious. I don't even know what he did there. I mean, it was the the under leg loop to loop. I mean, he took a swing at it. Flat I mean, roll. That's unbelievable. Between the legs. That'll, that'll make the highlight reel. Oh man, he's slipping all over the place. Yeah. Let's get. He's got to stay back. Don't run forward here. Good shot by Jason there. Good mix up. He had two balls to force Mitch back and then buried the pinch. But you know what? 9 6, two seconds ago he was up 9 6. Now it's 9 8. Yeah, that's Menino for you. Yeah, just absolutely. Just picking away at the scab. Look at that. Three excellent shots in a row by Jason. And three not bad shots by Mitch. And all of a sudden, ding dong, 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, it's incredible. This is where we were in the second game. And this is where this is ultimately where Mitch will be measured when he plays these guys. 9-9 nine, nine in, the, in the second game, 9-9 nine, nine in the third game. Obviously, there's not, not much between the two players. He has to find a way to get it done. And most of the time, it takes intestinal fortitude when it comes to this point in the match. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah the body language of Mitch right now, you can see the look on his face. He just kind of looks defeated. And you know, I, you know, I want to see that same look on his face that he had when he first came out, that first rally, well, those first few rallies. He had, he just had that look on his face, like, you know, I'm gonna beat this guy. Yeah. You know, and he's got to keep that. That was an excellent return. Now he's got to bury the pinch. And that worked out that well. That worked too. out well. It was a great shot. It was a total pinch situation there. He had. Jason on his other side. All he'd do is bury the pinch and rally over. He went with down the line, and we talked out about it before. You don't get beat up too often when you go down the line. Yeah, it's, not no, a very, it's complicated, but not that complicated. Yeah, of the shots in racquetball, you got to let's say you put one at the top of the list. Like, what's the what's the best shot you can hit in racquetball? I mean, down the line just seems to be in the textbook one of the best shots you can hit. It's always the safest. No question. Oh, did he get away with a terrible serve there. Jason got antsy, it kind of got deep, and it hit, looked like it hit the door, or was gonna hit the door. And Mitch really playing quick. Oh, he got a break. And he made it out, oh, he got a break. He got two breaks. And Menino, not needing to lose that game at all. I mean, all of a sudden, boom, 9-9, 11-9. Great finish to the game by Mitch. Yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. I, you, you see what Mitch was doing. He was moving quick. He was going up there for quick serves. He wasn't taking his time. I think that ended up working out for me. Jason 
ended up uh, rushing a couple of those shots, and it worked out in Mitch's favor. Smart move by Mitch Williams, and here we are now going into game four. Jason leading the series two games to one. We'll be right back. Welcome back. But one thing that Mitch needs to do, he needs to continue to serve well, and he needs to continue to return well. And that's easy to say. I mean, everybody has to do that to win matches, but at the top levels, you've got to do that. That's impressive. That's a really good looking swing. Jason thought that's... Yeah. Wow. Once, once again, Jason, you know, and, and Mitch talking a little trash. Not tr I wouldn't say trash, but kind of saying, listen, keep your thoughts to yourself there, Jason. That was a good shot. And good for him for doing that because it was a good shot. And that's what we've been talking about. Yeah. Hitting it down the line and then opening up, opening up the pinch and going with the pinch as a rally under. Let's go, Jay. One, seven, zero. You know, Jason Thorner, our referee, is actually in the quarterfinal match, and we're going to see him on the tennis channel uh, here also playing in a quarterfinal match. And oh, 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 jeepers. Oh, no. You still have a chance of one second. Oh, he's going to hinder beforehand. What do you think about that call? I, you know what? Jason did hold up. He did stop, but it was tight. And it, he wasn't really going as hard as I'd like to see it going after a ball to get a hinder, especially when the ball's two inches off the ground. But what I was, uh, the point I was going to make about Jason Thorner playing in this quarter, one of the things he yes. does is he's, he's a talker. Yes. So even if Menino's out there doing the yapping, and Jason Thorner is a talker. Yeah. And he uses that to his advantage. And uh, you know, like, it just kind of reminded me when, when Mitch said, no, I got that, you know, and he yes. basically called him out. You see Thorner do that quite a bit. Yeah, Thorner's very uh, entertaining from that perspective. Very entertaining. And Thorner will be matching up against the number one player in the world, Jack Hezai. So <laughs> that makes it even more interesting yeah, and entertaining. He's been running into Jack a lot this year, and uh, the results haven't been very favorable for Mr. Thorner. He's got a great game, but uh, you know when you're facing the top dog, it's tough. Anything can happen on these Grand Slam Stadium courts, though. Yep, we sure can. There's another spectacular get. Yep. And a good angle there by Jason. Jason did a very interesting thing there. He kind of closed his stance, made it look like he was going to hit, uh, he closed his left foot, looked like he was going to hit it down the line or a pinch, and then cut it around Mitch for a forehand pass. Who says there's no spin in racquetball? That was two. Pinch. Pinch. See, Jason's just playing center field. Pinch. Oh. Nope. No. Oh. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you adjust your calls, your judgment calls, based on the person that's playing? Oh, there's no question about it. Some people, no question, they're not going to get that ball. People like Jason Menino have proven that they get balls like that. So. The same call that you would make against somebody who doesn't dive as much as Jay, doesn't retrieve as much as Jay, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yes. The issue there was when you staple the ball to the side wall, there has to be some, con some discretion with the, uh, with the referee to understand the players and what they can do. And also, if you staple the ball to the side wall, you deserve the point. And in that case, I don't think throwing out a hinder to Jason just because he might have got his racket on it right. would have been the right call. Yeah, I believe that's fair. We've got a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout ourselves. When we get back, more racquetball action. Welcome back. Gracious. There's a great shot. I don't expect that uh, that Menino is going to completely lose his composure, but uh, he does need to get it in check and get focused on the job at hand here. That's 
that's a thunderbolt. Jason looks a little fatigued oh. right now. I have to say, I think he looks, you know what, yeah. not, and not physically, but mentally. He looks a little, a little stale. You know, he just doesn't seem as crisp as he should. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Fatigue, though? Mental fatigue. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I'm not, physically, I, no, I, physically I've, I've not seen him lose matches physically fatigued. But mentally, I think he is there right now. He's looking around, he's shaking his head, shaking his head. He's, yeah. he's, he's antsy, he's been frustrated during rallies. Oh my. Side referee involved in the match, calling a foot fault. And that's a bummer for Mitch. That's a toughie. Just a bummer. It's early in the fourth game, but you know, throwing points away is never a, Never fun. And then a fortunate serve there. Yeah, fortunate bounce. 14 Four, mile an hour two. lob Nick to the backhand. Punch lob and cracks out. Good draw weight. There's a good shot. Oh, and man. a phenomenal get. Get off. Menino staying very calm during the rally right now. Finally kind of Lions said, listen, let's get focused. And the last couple of points, actually the last three, very relaxed. And boom, three points. Not a very smart shot by Menino there. No. Skip the, a little lazy there, a little lazy, and a little late. That's the ball that usually he's stepping right. over and he's hitting that ball in the left corner instead of uh, kind of flicking it cross court. Pinch. Ugh. Well, now we got Mitch's thoughts on the match. 5-3. <laughs> with that half lob. Big, Ooh. big setup. Touch them all. Extra bases on that return. Six, seven, three. Yeah, see, that's not a good serve, and Mitch Time needs to out. take advantage of those. And Time out. That's a good call. He's going to take it, too. 7-3, game four. Menino starting to run away with this one here. What a great match we have here. When we get back, more exciting rapid ball. Welcome back, 7-3. We talked about the clutch points in the match and the big ones. Oh, and that's a big skip, Mike. Yeah, that's a turf Eight, burner. Seven, and you know what, it's uh, from 3-2 or 4-3 or whatever it was, five quick points, and now it looks like it's uh, just about over. Nine three now, two points away from the match. Jason would be advancing to the semifinals. Play the winner of uh, of Rocky and Hawthorne. Now match match point here for Jason Menino. Uh, it has to be a disappointing match for uh, for Mitch. A hard one to take and. Uh, we said it from the outset, if you don't 
establish the drive serve, you're not winning the match, and that's exactly what happened. Jason played his uh, normal match, and for the most part, didn't play as well as he usually does, but still did enough good things. Mitch not quite ready to call it quits. He isn't, but we have. Yeah, he... He's going to have to really pull something out here. Miraculous. Yes. When Doug Gannum, the tournament director, is standing at the corner with the microphone ready to interview the players. Yes. That's got to be a little disheartening. It's a to telltale, them. yes. <laughs> that's uh, like being in a, in a fight, being on TV, and the, and the uh, announcer says, oh, he's in trouble. And yeah. you realize, oh, wait a sec, I guess I am in trouble. We know he can pass balls. He's got to win the short rally. He's got to win the rallies up front. Maybe playing a little bit of squash or, you know, just grabbing a short racket and practicing. Don't even leave the front 20 feet of the court. Yeah, Huzak does that quite a bit. He yeah. plays squash. A lot of the top players have played a lot of squash. Uh, Yellen, definitely Jason plays squash. Yep. And Huzak had been plays. I, he might play more squash than racket. I was going to say, yeah, that, I, I've heard that from Jim Heiser mentioned that to me. That seems like Jack's playing more squash than he is racquetball. And it, the advantage of playing that game gives you, it, it, for racquetball players, it gives you, it helps your uh, racket skills and it helps your patience and your footwork for that matter because the court's smaller and you feel like you can get everything when you play squash if you're an elite player. Right. So you take that attitude onto the racquetball court, and you can tell that that's what Huzak thinks. He thinks he can get everything. He says, that ball, that's gettable. And I'm not diving. He's not diving after those. No, yeah, exactly. Wow, hanging around here, Mitch Williams. I think this is number five now that he's taking him out. Jason's had match point. That was kind of unbelievable. Uh, Mitch flipped the ceiling ball and it stuck like wallpaper to the right wall and uh, Jason couldn't fight it off. You know what, it's amazing is that he has hit the same serve. There's a good shot. There's a, a real nice patient touch shot and that's one of the ones that we talked about. You know, just enough court savvy to hit that shot and I don't think Mitch has got that shot. Yeah, no, unless he's swinging yeah. enormous. He'd, he'd be not. blasting. Right. This is it. Yep, good beat. Oh no, there's the setup. Oh, look at him. Kudos to Williams for not throwing in the towel. Yeah, staying in it. Yeah, the and he shows appreciation to that as well. Yeah, and he got beat on a call too. So it, I mean, it could very well be 8-10 right now. Seven ten. Skip ball, look at this, 8-10 now. This would just be absolutely crazy if Mitch somehow finds a way to win this. It'd be, he dives for the serve. And a skip ball. Of course, 9-10. This is, you know, it's amazing, that one missed call, and there's plenty of calls that go both ways, but that call, it, we could be sitting here at 10-10 after Jason had a 10-4 lead. And that's the shot that we thought he would be going to early, but he got stuck hitting side fronts. And he hit six or five side fronts, and, and uh, Mitch was camping up front. He finally went straight in and sided him out. I think Jason's going to go drive serve forehand. I mean, uh, lob serve forehand. Yep, and that's a good call. That's it. Jason guts it out. Mitch plays a great match, but Jason Benito gets the standing O from the crowd and takes the match in dramatic fashion. And here we are.
Jace Menino going into the semifinals, trying to defend his title here. The only one in the draw here that has got the reputation for being a champion here at the uh, U.S. Open. So Jace Menino doing what he does best, Mike. Yes, uh, you know what? It, he didn't play his best, but he won, and that's the main thing, and that's all he'll care about. Uh, we'll see how he feels tomorrow and, and see how he looks tomorrow. It'll be interesting. So that's the second quarterfinal match. We've got two more quarterfinal matches here. All kinds of racquetball coverage here at the 2007 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. Tune in, check your local listings, follow this tournament on the Tennis Channel. For myself, Mike Saricia, Royster Productions, the Tennis Channel, everybody involved here in this great event. Thanks for watching.